The Microsoft Word 2010 working screen contains a number of commands and elements and a variety of information. Among these elements are the title bar, the ribbon, contextual tabs, the quick access toolbar, and the status bar. The ribbon contains most of the commands you'll use as you work on your documents. It is organized by tabs, and each tab is divided into groups. The default tabs are File, Home, Insert, Page Layout, References, Mailings, Review, and View. Each group contains commands for performing a set of related tasks, such as viewing a document or editing text. You have been examining the working screen in Word and want to see what the ribbon and quick access toolbar offers. You'll try out some of the different tabs and commands available, as well as look at other ways to work with and modify the working screen to gain a better understanding of the tools available. The Home tab opens by default when you first open Word. We'll be looking at some of the commands in this tab shortly. But for now, let's begin by opening the first tab on the ribbon, the File tab. The File tab has a unique layout and contains everything you need to perform behind-the-scenes tasks, such as opening, saving, and closing files. In this view, also known as Backstage view, file commands and options are listed to the left, while options related to the currently selected item are displayed on the right. The currently displayed tab shows recently opened files and folders. Let's take a look at how the right pane changes by clicking the Print tab now. Clicking the Print tab changed the options in the right pane. Here we can see options for printing and previewing a document. The four buttons that appear at the top of the left pane, Save, Save As, Open, and Close, are always available regardless of the tab selected. Now that you know where to find file maintenance commands, let's move on to the Home tab. Notice the different groups in the Home tab, including Font, Paragraph, and Styles. Each group has different commands that relate to text formatting. Keep in mind that a command might be a button, menu, text box, or other feature. We could copy and paste text, or bold and change a font. If you don't know what a command is used for, you can place your mouse pointer over it and a screen tip will pop up, offering an explanation. Let's try it now. Another helpful feature of Word is the Mini Toolbar. The Mini Toolbar appears whenever text is selected and it contains commands for formatting the text. Let's see how it works. Now that the text is selected, we can see the mini toolbar. It initially appears faded out, but we can activate it by moving the mouse pointer over it. See what happened? Several commands related to the text appeared. This is a convenient way to change your font, add bullets, or change the indentations of your text. The mini toolbar saves you the time of having to look for a command on the ribbon. We're done with the mini toolbar for now. So let's deactivate it. Although we could click anywhere off the toolbar to deactivate it, let's click directly to the right of it. Next, let's take a look at the Quick Access Toolbar. It appears above the File and Home tabs. By default, this toolbar contains the Save, Undo, and Redo buttons. However, you can customize the toolbar to suit your needs. While the current buttons are helpful, Let's see what additional options are available. This drop-down menu contains a list of commands we can add to the toolbar, along with two options for accessing more commands and relocating the toolbar. It would be helpful to have a button that allows us to preview and then print a document. So let's add that command to the Quick Access Toolbar now. Now that we've got a button that allows us to quickly preview and print a document, let's move on to the View tab. The View tab is the last tab on the ribbon. From the View tab, we can change the way we view the document, as well as zoom or split the window into sections, switch between open Word documents, and view or record macros. 
Do you see the document views group? This group shows us the five different ways we can view our document. The print layout view is selected by default, but you can change it to the one that best suits your needs. Let's see what happens in draft view. This is draft view. Notice that although the formatting has been retained, the page layout is simplified. This makes draft view a good choice for simple text editing and formatting. A good proofreading view is the full screen reading view. Let's try it next. This time, we'll use the view buttons on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. Now let's see what other groups we can use on the View tab. We'll need to exit Full Screen Reading View first. The Zoom group has four Zoom View options for our document and a Zoom button. We can view one full page or two full pages at once. We can also view the document so that it fits the width of the window or see the document at 100% of its normal size. Clicking the Zoom button will open even more Zoom options. Let's try one of the Zoom options we can see right now. Did you notice how the document changed on our screen? Now we can see the entire page. Switching to one page view changed the Zoom percentage, which can be seen in the lower right corner of the screen. Let's use the Zoom slider to change the view to 75%. We've examined different ways to modify the Word working screen. Let's look at just one more, Splitting Windows. We can do this from the Window group of the View tab. The Split button lets you view different parts of a single document all at once. If you have more than one document open, the Arrange All button lets you view all of your documents at once. Since we only have one document open, we'll use the Split button. When you select the split command, your mouse pointer will turn into the split view mouse pointer with lines showing where the window will split. Though we can't see the split view mouse pointer here, we can still click where we want to split our window. Notice that once we clicked in the document, the split button turned into the remove split button. Now if we wanted to, we could scroll in either pane to view different parts of our flyer simultaneously. This can be especially useful in very long documents. We no longer need a split view, so we can use the Remove Split button on the Window group to return to the regular view now. The split view has been removed. We've covered several ways of using, manipulating, and changing the Word working screen. As you use Word more and more, you will discover additional ways to do these things, and you can decide which methods you prefer.